Hello, this is Mr. Buffington. We're doing properties of division in class today. So we're going to go through the properties of division. There's less of them than with multiplication. So here we go. Let's take a look at it. The properties of division, we're going to talk about three properties. The identity property, the division into zero property, and the negative one property. Let's take a look. The identity property. It's similar to the identity property of multiplication. What is it that you're going to do to identify yourself? A little bit more complicated than math. What can I do with the number 15 and division that will make 15 be itself? All right? So think about that for a minute. What can I do to 15 so that the result will be 15? Well, I divide it by 1. 15 divided by 1 is 15. That's exactly right. Any number divided by 1 gives you that number again. Any variable divided by 1 gives you that variable. Any negative number divided by 1 gives you that negative number. So this is the identity property of division. Take a number, divide it by 1, you get that number back. It's pretty simple. The identity properties are pretty, pretty straightforward. That's all it is, divide by 1. Multiplication identity property, you multiply times 1. Division identity property, you divide by 1. You're in good shape. All right. Sometimes they'll write this as a fraction. That's the only thing that, that may look a little bit different. Instead of writing it out as um, you know, like what I have here, 15 divided by 1, it might look like this, 15 over 1 equals 15. But that means the same exact thing. All right. Next property. The division into zero, property of division. Hmm. This one here seems uh, pretty straightforward. If you uh, take zero and you divide it by something, you get zero. If you divide a variable by a number, you get zero. Zero divided by a variable, you get zero. Zero divided by a negative number, you get zero. Zero divided by three, zero divided by eight. You just, I mean, a negative variable. You can pretty much, hey, mister, um, divide zero by anything, and you're going to get zero. So that is the division into zero property of division. All right? Zero divided by something gives you zero. If you take zero and you divide it into equal groups, every single group is going to have zero. That's another way of thinking about it. All right, the title of this makes it really easy to remember as well. Okay, last property of division, the negative one property of the division, which um, seems pretty straightforward as well. You're going to divide by negative one. And just like when you multiply times negative one, it's just going to change the number into being the opposite. So 15 divided by negative one gives you negative 15, the number's opposite x divided by negative 1 gives you negative x. So really, the, the whole point of this, you could do divided by negative 1 or times negative 1. It really does the exact same thing. And we will be using this one later as well, just like we'll be using the negative 1 property of multiplication later. But we'll be using it basically in the future to get rid of negative fractions or negative variables, to get rid of negative variables. So we're dealing with more positive numbers. All right? One last property, and you must memorize this property word for word if you ever want to pass my class. This is the um, Mr. Buffington's I'm tired of all these properties property, and this is how it goes. It says, when I see all this vocabulary, I start to worry that I've entered into an English class where they use long words to represent something that can be shown simply using a variable or a symbol that drives me absolutely nuts because in math, I can write what I want and nobody would tell me that it's too short or too long. Like right now, I'm writing a really long sentence that needs a comma or two and that's okay because it's math class. Have a great day, everyone.